stopping distance is calculated with your distance time setup. So, if I slam on the anchors at 40 kilometers an hour, let's see what happens. The measuring wheel is used to determine the distance travelled in each case. Although the time taken to stop doesn't change very much, the distance travelled increases dramatically. At 40 km per hour, the car travels 9.8 metres and comes to a stop in 2 seconds. At 80 km per hour, the car travels 25.1 metres and comes to a stop in 2.7 seconds. And when you know your stopping distances, write them down and post them through the letterboxes of everyone's house in the neighbourhood. Then they all know who's got the fattest tyres in the place. Wicked. OK, baby, ciao. Now it's time to see what real acceleration and deceleration are all about. And just in case you think I'm cheating, here's the Speedo captured live on camera. Read it and weep. As you can see, the graph's gone completely off the scale. I'm doing about 230 kilometers per hour. And that's legal, at least on a racetrack. of a motorbike compared to a car is much less and this means that the bike gets started much more quickly this shows in its acceleration of course the fact that i have a fantastic engine hidden in there also has got a lot to do with it and apart from smashing the opposition when it comes to acceleration emergency stops at the same speeds an equivalent car will also prove the bike to be much more efficient <laughs> 